Oh, hey, Crystal. Um, this isn't going to be a very long stream, because uh, I'm hoping to get some more progress done with Metroid Fusion with Ryan later tonight. So... Ah, that's cool. Um, you enjoying your break so far? Well, no, but, um, I am friends with people who do have it. Very tired due to homework time, and my family is getting our fence redone, and our dog is barking at the people working on it. <laughs> yeah, that's a mood. And, um, in case my art style may be obfusc obfuscating this, um, I decided I would draw Sayori from Doki Doki, um, today. I don't know, because, uh, with what me and the geeks, uh, saw during our playthrough last night, I kind of feel like doing something in her honor, you know? Because, like, I did mean, uh, what I said in that, uh, I resonate with this character, so, you know.
Yeah, after that game, Maniac kind of scared us on Discord due to his profile picture. But luckily in the morning, uh, my time, he texted me with a new profile and said he was fine. Yeah. I have no doubts that, uh, the game had triggers for, for people. And I, I totally understand. Um, because yeah, after that whole sequence, uh, I could tell it was getting to him. And I, I seriously don't blame him. Okay, kind of forgot that this song has a bit of a painful twang to it. <laughs> like, it's well composed, but Jesus Christ, my ears. I have a plan for the tie. But yeah, by all means, uh, keep checking in on Mr. Maniac. Yeah, I made sure to give him a ghost hug. <laughs> Good. And, um, to follow up on, uh, why I tagged the stream with ADHD in mind, um, because I can't get my thoughts together in one sitting, apparently, uh, my streams are also a safe space for, uh, people with ADHD, so, if you're ADHD, uh, then you're more than welcome here. Similarly, if you have anxiety or depression or a chronic illness of some sort, then that doesn't make me think any less of you. And I guess for anyone that's new here, um, I am an independent artist. I'm working on my own story. It's a dark fantasy uh, titled Phantom of the Forest. Um, I'm in the process of writing it. Um, I am making short stories on the side, but lately um, art has been kind of slow. Um, but I've been making it a point to be more consistent with it, so, um, it's a work in progress, but when I'm not drawing or doing anything related to that, um, I kind of yell at video games all day, <laughs> um, yeah, um, this is a very, um, friendly atmosphere, and it's also, uh, filled with, um, sarcastic, but caring remarks. Um, although sometimes we, uh, lambast assholes who deserve it, <laughs> so, yeah. Whoever you are, you're more than welcome here. Oh, um, hey, marker on a computer. Uh, oh, you're the highlight dude. Hey, how 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 do? Um, I'm drawing um Sayori from Doki Doki. Um, mostly following what we experienced last night. It was some heavy shit. 
And like I said before on the stream, I resonate heavily with this character, so I was like, okay, if I'm gonna do an art stream, then I might as well do it for Sayori. <laughs> By the way, I found out more info about DDLC, but I'll save those information. But I'll save that information when SNG goes back to it, depending on how things are going. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I actually did some of my own research because, I'll be honest, I couldn't stop thinking about that moment, and I was like, I I have to find out more, and I kind of went a bit too far in some places, so um. I don't... Uh, so I know... I know the context of what happens, but I don't know how they happen, if that makes sense. So... Yeah. But that's the... that's the nature of, um, horror-based stories. Sometimes, uh, you get so sucked in that you have to see how it ends. I say as Mega Man 9 music is playing. Um. By the way, happy to have you here, Marker. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh. Yeah, the highlight stuff is kind of an is on an unofficial hiatus for now. Sometimes watching people talk and writing down timestamps just makes you feel like you. Da, da, da. Yeah, don't worry. Um, <laughs> making highlights for anything is an undertaking, which is why I think it should be a multiple person job, unless you really have the willpower and the manpower. Um to do so, um, but no, by all means, uh, you can always catch us live, um, again, we tend to stream D&D once every Saturday, so this Saturday, it, it's a no-go, because, uh, Brian works that night, uh, he's Kedrot, um, but as for the next Saturday, yes, we're gonna do session four, so we'd be more than happy to have you along. And, uh, I, I do love your description for, uh, uh, the highlight reel that you were in the process of making, and, like, um, I have better things to do than to watch idiots play d, &D. It's like, yeah! <laughs> um, I can tell that you meant that in, in a, in the best way possible, but, like, yeah, hmm. <laughs> Um, it was just, it was just the way you wrote it down, I guess. Because you know what? We can be dickheads. <laughs> um, then again, everyone does. Um, everyone does a dickhead. Hang on, let me rephrase that sentence. Um, everyone can be an asshole, uh, intentionally or otherwise. <laughs> you know, he's... Unlike it for me, I live in the UK and it streams at midnight for me. Ah, okay. Okay, then, um, in that case, uh, yeah, just watch the bottom whenever it comes out. And don't feel obligated to make highlights. Um, if you want to make them, go ahead, but don't, uh, force yourself. Um,. Because while it is awesome to get highlights, um, I personally don't think they're a necessity, you know? Just, just go at your own pace, my dude. Uh, just don't forget, just don't forget that there are people behind, uh, the silly games too. But yeah, um, thankfully with all the shit I did prepare for Session 3, uh, you should have seen my notes. They were, like, massive, uh, because I didn't know where the party was gonna go at that time. Like, they were either gonna go to, um, Barovia Village, or they're, uh, going to go over 
to uh, to the west. Um, Still so alive! Oh fuck me! Hi. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, Garl was a thing too. Hello. Ah, uh, my dick. Yeah. Oh, I see you're drawing Sayori. Yeah. Um. I kind of feel like I owe it to her. Yeah. She is a good girl. Yeah. Oh, and uh, marker on a computer. The highlight dude is on our stream. Oh. Um, understandably, they're taking a hiatus from it, but it's like, dude, glad to ha have you here. Yeah, I'll, always glad to have an extra viewer. Yeah. Okay, so this is the background layer. Right now we're working on flats. So, yeah, I, uh, I just got done grocery shopping and checking out Spirit Halloween. Like, I usually like to do at least once in October. All right. Eh, uh, they didn't have too much of anything new. Hmm. Uh, actually, it seemed like they took off, like, a couple of costumes. Like, I you know, like, last year when I went there, they had they actually had an Ezio Auditori costume, but they didn't have oh, that on display wow. this year. Aw, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, uh, let me ask you. Which version? Uh, two, Brotherhood, or Revelations? Two. Two. Okay. Okay, so, <laughs> I think... I think, first of all, we need to get her bow tie out of the way. They, they did at least have the My Hero costumes there. Right. Yeah, but uh, the only ones that they had were of uh, the UA student uniform, the UA training uniform, and Deku's hero costume. Right. And it was, and it's the season one costume, too, the one that I already have. Right. Um... Yeah, that's that's what uh, clips are for, Marker. <laughs> yeah. uh, actually, how do you like to be referred, by the way? Uh, the your full title, or is is there a nickname that you like, or? Yeah, I saw that maniac actually gifted me a tier one sub to you, so naturally I feel like I should be here. Well, yeah. Um, Crystal asks, so why are you going to the spirit store? Uh, <coughs> well. It's mainly because... <coughs> oh, hold on, let me, let me catch okay? my breath here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, have you ever had that instance where, like, you breathe in and then suddenly you just get, like, a really bad cough? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've had that plenty of times. Yeah. yeah. And I so, doubt so, it's a COVID thing because I I like to think that you're a very healthy person. Yeah, I, I'm... I, I keep telling people, I'm honestly surprised out of all the people in my, like, work department, I have yet to test positive. Well, that's because you're taking the extra precautions, you know, despite all the shit that uh, some of those assholes put you through. Yeah, I know. Like, I, like to put in perspective, my supervisor caught it twice. Twice. Fucking idiot. Yeah, seriously. But, uh, yeah, to, but, uh, to go back to your question, uh, Crystal, I usually go there just to, like, check out what kind of costumes that they have there in case, like, you know, maybe I want to bring something back or whatever. Because it's actually... Spirit Halloween is actually where I got my Deadpool costume and my Deku costume. Yeah, the Deku makes sense. Yeah. Which, you know, I like the suit, but I hate how they did the mask. Like, it's, it's super okay. cheap. Yeah, I had that problem too. That's because you're smart. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's like, it's... I, I don't like how they handle, like, Deku's mask. Like, it's, it's like the cheapest way that they could have handled it. Um... I get the feeling that... Uh, it's, it's the, uh, Optimus Prime mouthpiece part, right? Um, no, well, basically, no, it's, a uh, like, you, it's not just that. It's, like, the whole, like, headpiece, like, even, like, the hoodie part of it is all oh. just, like, a plastic mask you put in front of your face. Oh, like, that's disgusting. That's yeah, disgusting. It's like, <laughs> that's not even how the suit works. Like, the whole, no. like, the whole, like, uh, bunny ear part of his head, that's supposed to be a hoodie. I think I fucked up here. Hang on. Uh, I'll I'll fix it when I go back to it. Yeah, and then yeah, you know the the Optimus Prime uh, mouthpiece like that. That's ju that's just supposed to be a mouth guard. Right. That you know. It's, I mean, technically, and of course, technically you know, that's that's what Optimus's uh faceplate is. It's protection. Yeah. Or and, if, you're, you know, if you're talking G1, it's his actual face. Yeah, and, and and you know it's like and it's also you know like you know oh hey it's supposed to be symbolic of like a uh, Deku smiling like all might because it's in the shape of a smile. 
Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, never forget. All Might looked at that and he's like, you're so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they also had, uh, they did have some, uh, Avatar The Last Airbender costumes there. Oh, cool. Um, Korra or the original? Uh, well, okay, uh, you said the original, so I'll, I'll assume the original. Actually, actually, they did have Korra. All right. Yeah, they had Korra, they had Sokka, they had Zuko. Surprisingly, of all the characters, they did not have Aang. Uh, you would think that he'd make a great kid's costume. <laughs> yeah, like, you'd think he'd be the first one they put up, and it's like, okay. Mm. It's like, I I guess they forgot about him, jerks. <laughs> they forgot about the last airbender. This sucks. Okay, considering who I'm drawing right now, uh, Roll's theme actually fits uh, Sayori pretty well. Yeah. Everyone gives Sayori hugs. I give her hugs. Plenty of them. Yeah, yeah like, the main character really should have stayed at her house that night. Yeah. And... Yeah. Another, another like, reason I'm drawing her also is because... I miss her already. Yeah. And like, I know she's 18, but even then, she's still baby. Yeah. She is... She, she is precious baby. Yeah, like... 18 uh, year olds are considered adults, very, very young adults, but in a lot of ways, some of them mature slower than others, and in that instance, they're still kids. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I more so say that. Like, I think it's just more so, like, yeah, like they're, they're, like, because, yeah, they're I guess still it depends adults. on how they carry themselves. Yeah. Like, I guess, I guess the more appropriate ways, like, you know, the best way to refer to, like, Sayori is, like, she's a bean. Yeah. She's a good bean. Exactly. Okay, and, and she then deserves we'll hugs. Overlap that with yes, all of them. Uh, the, the the Halloween store even had, like, some of the inflatable costumes, and I'm like, oh my god, these are cursed. Hmm. Uh, you know what? Huh? Oh! Someone was forgot- Oh! Okay. Okay, so, uh, Ryan, uh, just- got back to us in uh, our other call. So I can leave forgot that, uh, that I plan to get my oil changed today, so I'm not gonna worry about streaming for right now. Ah, why is this in the soundtrack? <laughs> I'm turning it down. Okay, okay, Wiley, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, TV. <laughs> You're cool boosting. Ah, make it stop. Anyway. Um, I'm not going to worry about any streaming for right now. We can definitely uh, plan to resume things this upcoming Saturday if you're all f up for it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. But yeah, um, actually, uh, I guess with that in mind, ugh, since, uh, all I need to do for Sayori is finish, finish up her color and then, uh, shading... And then, well, obviously uploading. Um, considering this part of the stream is so short, I think we will continue Metroid Dread. Um, okay. After this. Okay. And Crystal, I know that uh, you're averse to um, watching it, and that's totally fine. Like, no spoilers is definitely a good way to go. Um... I mean, I'm not that much of an, a DDLC fan, but she's a relatively wholesome character in a horror game, which means that we should, by law, protect her at all costs. Exactly, yeah. Marker! Like, you you get it. Yeah. Fuck you, Monica. Yeah, like, uh, I, I know I've been very openly hostile with him up to the point of annoying Brandon and Ryan, but, like, 
look, um, if I hate a character, um, I, it's hard for me to let murder go, you know? Like, uh, I mean, I won't, I, I don't think I've done it uh, as, uh, bad as I, as I think they think I've been doing it, but, um, like, I don't forgive murderers, okay? <laughs> Especially when it's for someone like Sayori. Yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, Metroid and murderers, uh, I happen to have stumbled upon a Ridley amiibo. Ah. Uh, did you blow it up? Uh, no, but I do have it now. Ah, uh, we're the robots! Yeah. And uh, Okay, this is my favorite track from the entire game. Yeah. And, and and you know what? It, I, it honestly kind of got me thinking on the drive home. Yeah? Because, like... Apparently, Dread is supposed to be, like, the finale of the Metroid arc of the series, like, yeah? Yes, yeah. But, like, they still have, like, plans on possibly continuing Samus's like, space bounding adventures. Of course, yeah. It kind of got me thinking, what if the next Metroid game kind of explored the backstory of, like, some other characters? Like, what if we found Ridley species, like, where, like the planet they lived on? Oh, we can actually uh, make Greed an official character. <laughs> yeah. From Samus and Joey. Yeah. Um, but no, that would be an interesting prospect. But I think it, I think it comes down to okay, how how much is Nintendo of Japan and Yoshio Sakamoto willing to take that risk? Because yeah, while out of most of the series of Nintendo, Metroid is the one they take the most risks in. But even then, um. I still think they're a little tight-lipped and apprehensive about some things. Like, if Yoshio Sakamoto's idea of a Metroid movie done by anyone other than the choreographer from Other M is any indication. Yeah, yeah because it's like... Because it's like, I, I want to imagine it's like, okay, if we go to, like, if we find, like, the species that Ridley came from, like, if we were to see, like, other people, like, of his species, are they just as aggressive as Ridley? Like, are they just naturally, like terrible, awful, murderous monsters? Or are some of them, like, you know, more peaceful kind of people, and Ridley just kind of went off the deep end somewhere? Yeah, or is that specifically a Ridley thing, and the rest of his species are uh, more or less like us? Yeah, like, imagine if it's, like, a Venom symbiote thing, where, like, yeah, the symbiotes aren't actually violent creatures, it's just Venom went insane. Yeah, thanks, Deadpool. <laughs> A bit too strong of a white. I really should use the wand tool in some of these areas. There we go. Uh. I would get a costume because I want to dress up as Rapunzel. Uh, I would love to make that outfit since the store only has it as like kids or the mature version and not the normal version for adults as far as I know, but because of uh, classes, I might have to put that in the closet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the store I went to, they didn't actually have that, but they did have like a Disney villain costumes. Huh. All right. Yeah, um, they had they had Ursula, they had, uh, they had Maleficent, they had Cruella. Mm-hmm. Wait, hang on, let me ask you for- let me ask you this. Um, is it the original animated Cruella, or is it the Cruella from the, uh, <laughs> the fucking remake? It's the one- the, the one with the, um, the- Danganronpa it's, punishment. Yeah, it- it's the- Dalmatians murdered my mom's um, Cruella. Okay, so Dungan Rampa. Yes. <laughs> Emma Stone was in that movie. It's, it's, like, someone was writing the script of that movie and said, yes, we need to put this in. And, like, I, I bet it, uh, Emma f felt the exact same way Andrew Garfield did when uh, they, you know, steered Peter Parker's character the wrong way, because... Uh, if I, if memory serves, I think she was looking very forward to, uh, playing as Cruella, but then, you got this script. Yeah, then it's like, 
I'm sorry. This character's mother, what? <laughs> she gets killed by Dalmatians. And then she starts laughing. It's like, are, are we just making a shit post or something? Because this sounds like a shit post. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a serious character motivation. Come on, dude. <laughs> she, she just, she just has like, the, she just has like a very slow, like squishy blink. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, that remake. God, trying to give a woman who wants to make a puppy code a tragic backstory. I know you have a tendency to do questionable things, but what the hell, Disney? <laughs> Look, hey, keep in mind, they're the same assholes who would make a big deal out of a side character who just happens to be LGBT, but they don't put it on the forefront, you know, like they should. Make well, characters like that an actual character and yeah, don't put it on the sidelines. Yeah, because China. Even, Fuck China. CC, even CC agrees. But okay, let me rephrase that. Fuck that area of China. Hello, CC. Hi, CC. Yeah, see, even she agrees. Uh, I, I also will say, um, on the uh, on today's episode of Realm as a Goddamn Fool, I went seeing if I could find any more things in regards to Pokemon cards like the Greninja V Union set, but no, all of it's gone. What was I expecting? Hmm. I'm never gonna get my I'm never gonna get my four card Greninjas. Secret secretly hopes to the card gods that you get it. It's like it's like, you know, well, Ridley, anymore, but... Ridley, if you were going to be a psychopathic murderer, you could have at least taken the scalpers. Listen, I'm a space pirate, not a miracle worker. What what miracle? You just go to a scalper and you fucking murder them. <laughs> I have more important people to murder, like, say, a certain bounty hunter with an arm cannon. And I guess her parents are apparently more important than that, too, huh? Listen, that was one time. Yeah, I don't know why I'm questioning this. Disney are literally the, this is the first LGBTQ plus character we've ever made. Guys, it's not as if you've made that, said that like 15 times already. Yeah, they did. Like, they also, uh, they also did it twice. Like once in the Beauty and the Beast remake, I believe, with LeFou and some dude that he kissed. Yeah. Uh, and it was for like super. Uh, it was, it like, was like for, for it was like for two seconds. Yeah, for two seconds. Uh, similar deal in um, Rise of Skywalker um, with the two pilots. <laughs> and even then, it's like guys, you keep saying the first LGBTQ plus character you've ever pr put out there, but like, pleakley has been here the whole time. Yeah, like, are you just gonna forget about him? You know what? Yes, they they would. <laughs> How dare you forget about Pleakley? Yeah. Dick bags. He's voiced by Waffle. Yeah. What are you thinking of right now? Cord. This could take a while. <laughs> oh, also, um. Also speaking of Metroid, did you see that thing that I uh, that I added you at in the uh, in the trash hole? Uh oh, I think I was, I think I was in the thrall of sleep. Uh, yeah. pff, where is it? Yeah, uh, yeah, basically, uh, David Jaff calling Metroid Dread bad design. I'm gonna be that asshole and ask who the hell is David Jaff, and why should I care? Because that is a shit take. I mean, th this is the first time that I was hearing of him, too, but it's like, I was watching this video, and it's like, apparently he felt like uh, invisible, breakable walls and a Metroidvania is bad game design. Uh, how long have you been uh, into the series? Because, you know, finding hidden passageways is kind of Metroid's thing. <laughs> oh. What? Oh. What? So, uh... David Jaff is an American video game designer best known for his contributions to the Twisted Metal and God of War franchises. Okay, so he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> Who doesn't respect the classics. 
Okay, so nice to know his opinion is automatically invalid. Okay, because like, because like he's like, there's no indication that you can do this, but it's like, uh, you know, except for the enemy floating above there. Like, how do you think he got there? Also, specifically, um, what uh, God of War did he work on? God of War Four or the old ones? Um, I need to. Okay, so, yeah, uh, the old ones, but funny enough, he stopped at God of War 2. I wonder fucking why. Because <laughs> if that's the attitude you're going to have with uh, series that are older than yours, then you don't deserve to be a designer. <laughs> and apparently you worked on Mickey Mania? Yeah, sir, have you ever played any of the Metroid games? No? Then shut up. And, and Onward as well, and in the Owl House too, I believe. And that's the only times I can bother to remember. Well, okay. Uh, from Owl House, from what I understand, that's better handled. Yeah, it's much more open about it. And it actually does do that with its main characters, not just side characters that are just there for two seconds. Right. Um, like, then it also, it also comes down to characters who happen to be gay, but, you know, aren't token uh, archetypes, which is one of the best ways you can write gay or LGBTQA plus characters. Like, um, those people are often so mis uh, misrepresented that uh, they deserve better representation than that. Yeah. So, um, by all means, try harder on that. <laughs> Yeah, and like the funny part is in this video, like they're showcasing clips of everyone else streaming this game who just shoot the ceiling and just don't act surprised like at all. Mm. Yeah, because like the other thing too is like, doesn't Dread also kind of encourage you to do that? Like check for invisible walls constantly? Yes. Yeah. And uh, it also allows players to sequence break, which, hey, I don't think God of War 2 allows you to do that, so... No, it's, it's it's extremely linear. No. So, which game ha automatically has more thought put into it? <laughs> I mean, the other thing, too, I will also say is that God of War 2 was also an inconsistent mess with its writing. Uh, all the old God of War games were like that. Like, God of War 3, I think, is the worst with it. Um, like, okay, the foundations are there... But, um, it's like, uh, it's just the execution sucked balls. Yeah. Well, because like, you, you, you don't play the, those games for the story. You play the games to kill gods. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I will, that I mentioned about it is just that I, I, I hate this, I hate this kind of method when it comes, when it comes to time, tra telling time travel stories. Because it just raises so many fucking questions. Like, because uh, apparently the Titans were ended up being saved by Kratos by him going back in time and being like, oh, we'll go to a further part in time to stop them, to, you know, fight the gods. But it's like, okay, so essentially they disappeared before that, before Zeus's attack ended up running. How exactly does that alter the present time though like it almost feels like oh we just take these guys back and nothing ends up changing from that it's like it's like i doubt it's a stable time loop issue yeah like like i'm pretty sure that there should be a major paradox going on here yeah like what if the ramification what if the ramification for that is in an effort to save himself kratos locked himself out of existence yeah and also apparently Kratos goes back in time, not before the part where Zeus, not before Zeus kills him, but literally after. Shouldn't that Kratos be gone? Yeah, not to mention, uh, it's weird because uh, I think some of the portal, portable games have better writing than the main series does. They do. Which is super odd. Like, uh, yeah, even this version of Kratos has some dimension to him. Like, he's still uh, a, in a hyper-aggressive dickwad, but... He still has a lot more depth. And also in God of War Ascension, which uh, not a lot of people uh, think about for obvious reasons, um, Kratos does uh, openly exp express regret in uh, killing someone who he's, he's considered a friend uh, come endgame. And he's like, I've spilled enough innocent blood. 
Um, not to mention, you know, uh, his relationship with his mom in one of the handheld games. Uh, but even then, it's... I don't think it really uh, makes up for much. <laughs> And I'm coming uh, from a perspective that I'm also a storyteller, and now that I've gotten older, I can see all of the uh, issues the game has, and it... It is... is ew. Ew. <laughs> Specifically the story, because, again, I don't think they were thinking about the story uh, when it comes to the gameplay, because the gameplay is... I think it holds up. And then we have the new God of War games, which are actually really good. Uh, God, it's bad enough that I'm hearing sly rumors and articles about those rumors now that I have to deal with Metroid articles. That doesn't understand how the game works when it's not that hard to learn. Yeah, like... Okay. It's one thing to be... Co it's one thing to be overwhelmed by the format of a Metroid game. You know, it's a sprawling uh, explor exploration adventure. And... If that intimidates you, that's okay. You don't have to force yourself to play it. But don't go calling it bad because you don't understand it and you go, Oh wait, that's how- that's where we're supposed to go? Fuck you, designers! Why can't you be more like God of War 2, the game I worked on? Suck my dick! Yeah, well, I, I feel like that is just unfortunately kind of a result of how games have kind of been somewhat dumbed down more recently. Yeah, and I'm guessing J David Jaffe was uh, a part of the problem in that result. Yeah, because it's uh, like, because like, yeah, let, let's be real here. The God of War games are like really like super straightforward. Yeah, like, I mean, even so, that makes his argument even worse because um, you're comparing a beat em up to a Metroidvania. <laughs> Not even Metroidvania, Metroid. <laughs> you know, one of the one of the series responsible for the t for the genre. Yeah, it's. But it actually, actually, it's funny though because I was looking through the comment section and apparently the guy considers Shantae to be really good, and well designed games, even though they themselves are Metroidvanias. Yeah, and even then, Shantae is like Shantae. I love you, but your games can be pretty piss easy. <laughs> yeah. Well. I, th I think that's fine. Like, you don't have yeah, to make... It's totally fine. Like, I'm not saying that's a problem at all. It's just... Um... It depends on the game, really. Um, yeah, yeah you can be a Metroidvania-styled game, but you can also have the difficulty of Kirby. Yeah. Which, in of itself, I is meant to introduce uh, gamers into the world of gaming. Yeah. And, and you know what? I feel like that's okay for Shantae to be like, you know, hey, do you want to get into the Metroidvania genre, but, you know don't want to suffer through Hollow Knight as your first game, which, you know, <laughs> rip Danny. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, here, there's a, here's an easy, like, entry point for the Metrovania genre. Have fun, you know, just give them some Shantae. Or, uh, another decent entry point to, uh, the Metrovania genre, uh, Dustin Elysian Tale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because, like, um, because yeah, because yeah, if you if you want to just experience the story and like know how a Metroidvania experience is, you can put it on easy. Like yeah, you can just go to easy mode and it's like it's a super easy breeze. Oh yeah, I forgot this was part of the Mega Man Nine soundtrack. Hang on, let me just. Yeah, they just play sound effects for some reason. But yeah, it's like, I, I, it's like yeah, I, I never recommend Hollow Knight as somebody's first Metroidvania. Just no. Like, I recommend you play it eventually if you're into the genre because it's really good. Yeah, it's great. But it's like, yeah, as your first one, no. <laughs> like, God yeah. bless you. Yeah, it's definitely not a good entry level one. Okay, so, uh, marker. Um, actually, before I forget. Uh, let me see if I can, let me see if I can sync my subscribers on the Discord, and then I'll send you an invite if you're interested. Oh, by the way, Brian, uh, someone named, uh, One Random Sylveon followed me on Twitch this morning. That name sounds so familiar. I don't know if it's that Sylveon. 
No, because then it would be just a Sylveon. So yeah. like I didn't I decided not to do anything about it uh yeah. until they do something. Yeah. And you know, that's fair. Yeah, Hollow Knight's good, but it has a tendency to be a bit incredibly difficult. Uh the term you're looking for is Nintendo hard. Yeah, it's um Actually, uh, my friend Silver Keyblade described Hollow Knight as, like, baby's first Soulsborne. Oh, yeah, that's my old Twitch account name. Oh, so that's, uh, so that's your handle. Okay. All right, then. Uh, okay. Um, but here. Okay, yeah, like that. The other person that we we're thinking of is, uh, much more problematic. And, uh, that's putting it lightly. Yeah, very lightly. Like, we're talking about a person who, uh, they've been stalking my friend Doodle Tones for, like, a couple, like, I want to say a couple of years. You know, impersonating, impersonating her, stealing her assets, pretending to be her. All the, yeah. And they've even stated they refuse to stop until Doodles is just gone from the internet for good. Like... They're petty to the umpth, uh, umpteenth degree. Yeah, and, and, uh, and on top of that, uh, they've also gone as far as to trying to weaponize Doodles' dead name, which is something you shouldn't ever do. And to yeah. hard, like how, um, hard in the sense that it encourages you to keep trying. Like, uh, it's designed in such a way that is like mega hard and you're like uh i gotta get through this and then when you finally do it's supposed to invoke a feeling of satisfaction yeah, like it's hollow knight definitely it, actually it's funny because hollow knight does derive some uh inspiration from zelda 2 um yeah i can totally see that hang on let me uh get a new soundtrack so this stream is gonna hitch a bit because <laughs> My lappy is weak. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I guess another thing uh, you might be interested to know about me, um, Marker, uh, I'm kind of a metalhead, so if I can, I will uh, play as much uh, hard rock or heavy metal as I can. It's it's my preferred genre. Like, okay, I grew up with Batman Beyond, all right? It wasn't until uh, a year or two prior when, uh, while listening to the Doom soundtrack... And then Doom Eternal, I was like, oh, wait a minute. I think I'm a metalhead. <laughs> and this is from uh, Transformers Devastation. It's the uh, Insecticon theme, specifically uh, when you fight Kickback. And uh, his, his friends. It's like, literally, the in-game tips say, if you find a dead end, try shooting missiles. You could find the path forward. Yeah, so, like, you not following the game's criteria is your fault, J uh, Jaffe. Yeah. Enemies crawl on the ceiling and try to get to you to shoot the breakable blocks that are attached to, while also clearly showing a hallway on the floor above in a game that tells you that there are breakable walls, floors, ceilings within the first few minutes of the tutorial. David Jaffe. Why would I even 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 know to shoot there? Because you lack imagination. <laughs> well, okay. Um, I can tell you. I can tell you my problems. Uh, when it comes to uh, finding hidden pathways. Like, uh, I love playing Metroid, but I am the first one to admit that I am not an expert at them. But I still like playing them anyway, because I respect the genre. I respect the series that much. And Samus is one of my favorite characters. Like, go figure. Alexandra is based heavily off of her. <laughs> like, down to the fact that her parents were killed by uh, a monster. You know, Kragata. Uh, the same person who cursed her. But, um... 
I still like playing uh, the series because I like to challenge myself. It's just how I am as a gamer. And um, I also like to see how far I can get by myself before I start looking up a guide. Um, which I have a bit of an embarrassing story about that <laughs> uh, when it comes to Metroid Dread. But we'll get to that when we uh, get to that point. Actually, uh, I do want to see if I can uh, pull off a sequence break uh, during uh, the stream later, but I doubt I'm going to be able to pull it off. Um... The baby has returned. Ah, so she does. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> She make monkey noises. It's like a cheetah. They make every other noise except for what most cats make. Yeah. It's like they're giant house cats and nothing but giant house cats. Yeah. Like, sure, they're uh, dangerous in uh, close quarters, but unfortunately, they expend too much energy to be a consistent threat. Yeah. Which is partially why I think they're endangered, right? Yeah. Hey, Nature, could you buff cheetahs? Yeah, and uh, can you stop making it so that they have to inbreed? <laughs> Please? Okay, can we talk about uh, the, mon the monkey meme for a sec? Yeah. I genuinely don't know how it got started. Because uh, in the context of the scene itself, it's a really well done scene. Because uh, if you actually watched The Secrets of the Furious Five... Uh, then you know that Monkey only acts out because he was bullied, and then he's like, you know what? Fuck the world, I'm gonna bully them back! Um, and then Uguay humbled him, and then proceeds to say, after saving his life from a crumbling building, he's like, you saved me, why? And the full line is, hmm, Monkey, I see you possess great skills, but I also see in you great pain. And then he, uh, tells him to use the skills for good because that's what a compassionate person would do. Because the lesson of his segment of the story was a good Kung Fu master understands compassion. Yeah. Well, I think it literally is just because of the whole mm, monkey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, out of context, it is funny, but it's like, you wonder how shit like that gets started. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I just need to color in her lower legs, and then, um, we should be getting close to done. Yeah, good luck trying to delete this one on Monica. Don't fuck with me, Monica. I'll delete your ass. <sighs> oh god, I'm thinking of XP to level 3 again. Um... He was reviewing uh, the worst rated uh, homebrew, and one of them was a, was a uh, cleric domain known as the garlic bread domain. Yeah. And I think um, it's I think it's either level six or level three feature. Basically, allows you to fucking delete someone's ass if they don't like your garlic bread. Yeah. Yeah, I... And he had this little uh, skit with himself where he's like, okay, you go out to a Serac, and he's like, oh, finally, I'm going to destroy you. And then he's like, hey, you like garlic bread? No, I hate garlic bread. Okay, poof. Ah! Hey, hey, Monica. I cast Fireball. I cast Fireball. You're out of spell slots. You can't use Fireball again. I Good have, thing I have a level four, four spell slot. <laughs> <laughs> you killed the changeling that was tailing you the whole game. Your father walks up to you and embraces you and casts fireball. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, in the sequel, um, does the house need to make a deck save? Does it have a little legs? No. Then I cast Fireball on the house, so it can be used for orphans. Actually, uh, speaking of D&D, I took the time to take a look at, uh, Tulak's build for Greninja, and... Yeah? I was 
I wasn't expecting the build he was going for, but I kind of like it. Mm, what's that? So, tell me the first thing that you would think of if uh, you were to build, if you would like build Greninja, like as a D&D &D character. Like, what class do you think you'd put him in? Uh, definitely Thief, maybe Scout Ranger. Uh, would you ever considered Monk Druid? Monk Druid? So basically the idea is like, yeah, uh, you go like, uh, so for Monk, you go for like, uh, the Shadow Fist, the Shadow Fist Monk. So you can do like all sorts of more stealthy stuff in the shadows. Uh -huh. But where Druid comes in is, uh, because, you know, since Druid's whole thing is that, you know, they can transform into things, you can flavor that into Protean. Oh, how so? Uh, basically, you have, like, uh, different sets of transformations that you can have Greninja go to and say, like, you know, okay, like, I'm going to use this kind of transformation to be, like, you could flavor as, like, you know, Greninja became, like, a grass type or he became, uh, he became an electric or a, or a rock type. Okay, I can see that. And, yeah, I found that interesting. I'm like, that, that's not the first thing I would think you do for a character like this, but I'm all, I'm all for it. Yeah, like, um, Druid is, I think, the hardest class in D&D &D to play as, uh, with Cleric being the second hardest, and that's mostly because of their spellcasting system, as well as the fact that getting the monster manual is a requirement, if you even think about touching the class. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to manage and memorize, but, um, yeah, I think Druid is definitely an interesting way to go about the Protean ability. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, Druid gives Greninja access to utilizing, uh, utilizing Double Team. Huh. Oh, honestly, when I saw the Metroid series, thanks to Johnny, uh, because I never knew anything about these games, but no, I knew it from Smash. Yeah, I think that's most of us. But when I learned about them and played Super Metroid's demo in Brawl, I can understand that it'll be different from the game I'm usually playing like Mario and Kirby. But I still wanted to try it out, and I think I got featured on my Wii U thanks to you. Oh, wow. Um, cool. Um, but yeah, honestly, uh, Metroid Fusion and uh, Zero Mission are great entry-level games, um, if you want to get into the series. And that's kind of what Johnny recommended, so I was just kind of following his example. But I think he's right. Um... So, you would play Fusion or Zero Mission, or both, and then you would play Super, and then you can just go full ham otherwise. Yeah. Just avoid other M&O costs, please, yeah. <laughs> for me. And, yeah, and you know, the other cool thing, too, about Greninja is that you actually can play as a frog person in D&D. Yeah, uh, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, their name is escaping me. Uh, a grung. Grung, yeah. Yeah, gr grung are frog people. Yeah. They're also little shits, apparently. Yes. Although, he he did, uh, he, the Tulak did say that, uh, you, uh, say that your dumb stat probably would be intelligence since the only thing you can say is your name, but disclaimer, do not pick this kind of character and just say your name over and over again. <laughs> And then there's definitely going to be that asshole who does it anyway. Yeah, it's like, oh god, I'm going to have people cut my video and be like, oh, this person's saying their name over and over again because they thought of this build. Like, I told them they shouldn't do that! Like, that is the one thing I told them to avoid! <laughs> <laughs> well, I did it anyway. Suck my dick, barbarian. <laughs> okay, now you're going too far, wizard. <laughs> I cast for if you use fireball then you'll die too. I I cast fireball on Colton's character. <laughs> fireball solves everything. You've killed the doppelganger that has been trailing you this whole session. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I remember you and Johnny said that I got fusion because I'm not sure exactly. Uh, I think there was a special event or something that fusion was a part of that I got it. Still need to get zero mission. Yes. Um, chronologically, um, zero mission is the first game, so definitely get to that when you can. But I would not recommend the original NES title for the love of God. It did not age well. It didn't. It it aged like shit on a blanket. It aged like milk. Yeah, it, it aged like milk exactly. Milk. Get some milk. By the way, Danny referenced uh, milk last night. I know. Uh, I I also saw that. Uh, I also saw that. Uh, there are definitely some conversations that changed when you redid the game. Yeah, and none of them pleasant. Like, I, I'm especially scared for Yuri. Like, I'm not Me scared too. of her, I'm scared for her, because I know what's happening to her. Me too. Monica's fucking with her brain. She's fucking with all of them. Yeah, like... <laughs> Some friend you are, Monica. Friend? No. I'm God. No, Monica's so, uh, definitely the sort of person who go like, Oh no, I'm not playing God. I just realized I'm tired of playing human. Yeah. As she, Jordan, Monica is essentially what would happen if when, uh, it's essentially what would happen if Haruhi ever learned that she had the powers of a God. Yeah. With great power comes great insanity. That, Ooh, I think that's, that's the trope. That's some interesting news, Twitter. Huh? The sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse has an official title. Oh, shit! What? Across the Spider-Verse. Oh. And it's coming in the year of our Lord and Savior 2022. Oh, it's coming next year. Okay. And, God damn it, Musha. <laughs> what? He, he did an edit of the title. And it's like, you fucking would. Here, I will post it in memes. Oh, wait a minute. Is it referencing that one movie called Across the Universe? Uh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> Moshe, you fucking would. Um, okay, hang on, hang on. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. here it is. This is what we were laughing at. Oh, also, Shiny Zashian and Shiny Zamazenta will finally be a thing. Cute. I just... Yeah, yeah, you did show us that. Um... I think I would like to have sign, uh, uh, signy, shiny Zachian, uh, than Zamazenta, because I, I like Zachian. She, she's nice. Zamazenta got shafted. Wait, she did? Yeah, the, the, the fact, I gotta say this, Zamazenta is so bad at Ubers that they actually considered putting it in OU. Hmm. Oh, sorry, I, I registered that Zachian got shafted. Yeah, no, Z Zamazenta. No, yeah. Zachian's fucking busted. Yeah. Easily one of the best uh, Pokemon ever introduced in the series. They're, they are in anything ghost here. They're that good? She's that good? Yeah, and the scary part is both versions are in anything goes. Down, girl. Get it because she's a wolf <laughs> with a sword. I I think that's why I think that's why she's in anything goes because she's a fucking wolf with a fucking sword, it's... like a uh, Sif from Dark Souls. God, they they just they just straight up looked at Zashi and they're like, so how much damage do you want this thing to do? Yes. That's not an answer. Did I stutter? Uh, okay. Yes. How how, how fast should they be? Yes. Yes. And their base defense is... Yes! 
okay, we'll make it a very steel type. I'm glad you see reason. And then they put the gun away. Well, actually, actually, no, actually, no. I like to imagine, like, they're thinking of the fairy steel type. It's like, okay, we need to think of a, we need to think of an interesting type for this Pokemon. Oh, I got one. I got one that will really help make things, make things balanced for this Pokemon. Uh, okay, what's that? Make it a fairy steel type. I'm sorry, what? Make I'm it sorry. fairy steel. I'm sorry. Do you, do, do you want to keep your job? Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, okay, sir, 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 sir. Let's get, come here. All right. We just gave this thing 170 physical attack, 148 mm -hmm. speed. Yeah. 115 defense and special defense. We have made this thing faster than Zero Aura and hits almost as hard as Mega Rayquaza. In fact, I see no problem can, with that. In fact, it can hit just as hard as Mega Rayquaza because once it's on the field, it gets a plus one in physical attack thanks to Intrepid Sword. Yeah? Uh -huh. And you want to give this offensive powerhouse the best defensive typing in the game. Yeah. I think it'll help. Yeah, I think it'll help. You're getting off on this, aren't you? <laughs> like, I quit. <laughs> I quit my job. <laughs> I did it. Now I'm the CEO of Game Freak. <laughs> so, anyway, that's why we made the music in the Sinnoh remakes bad. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's another thing that oh, I hey, heard Big too. Mac. Hey, there's another thing that I also heard about that the Gen 4 remakes are doing, and again, I'm just going, why? Hmm. Uh, but before that, have you guys ever heard of Goose Goose Duck? Um, no, I have not. I've heard of Duck Duck Goose. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of Duck Duck Goose, but never Goose Goose Duck. It sounds like an inverse of that. Is is that like a Bizarre World version of that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll need more music. Yeah, but yeah, like that... One of the changes I saw that they no, one of the changes that Demons they're maniac. putting in the remakes. I'm just like, okay, but why though? Yeah, like, um, I hope it was just a beta version of the remix that they played. Because if that's gonna be in the official game, you're gonna have to do a bit more convincing than that. <laughs> okay, so. Jordan, you remember how prior to Gen 5, TMs were one-time use? Yeah. They're bringing it back. Guys, what are you doing? That was the one thing I asked you not to do! Like, okay, I, I was especially afraid of this because they said it's going to be a very faithful remake to the, uh, to the original. I'm like, okay, how faithful is it going to be, though? And it's like, no, you're going too far! <laughs> And uh, I, I will say, I love how a lot of people, the people in response to that are saying, this is probably Miss Suda's idea. They all need to fucking sleep. They're overworked. <laughs> They're forgetting all of their cool changes. Like, you know, you can use TMs whenever, however you want them. But now it's just one fucking use? Yeah. You brought it back to zero, guys! What are you doing? Goose Goose Duck is an Among Us inspired game where the geese are the crewmates and the ducks are the imposters. Oh. Alright. That was a lot more lame than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, also, I think Blue wants out, so I will be right back. Yeah, Blue, I heard you. Bye. And, okay. Um, we're almost done with this, so... Oh, yay, they're also making shiny versions of Sashi and V and Zamazenta V. I can't wait to never get my hands on those because of scalpers. Hmm. Humanity oh. is annoying. I say as a human. Yeah, yeah. Again, Ridley, if you want to be a murderer and not face any consequences for it, scalpers are right there. Alright. 
LTG isn't worthy enough to be a regal Ryu. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I love the alliteration. <laughs> yeah, I do love me some alliteration. Um... Actually, all my dwarves in Phantom of, the Fo Phantom of the Forest have this verbal tick where they all have an alliterative speech pattern. Yeah. I didn't really give an explanation as to why. I just thought it would be an interesting uh, um, racial trait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Wouldn't that be stereotyping then? Oh, actually, there is one dwarf who doesn't do that. So... Probably not. So, uh, yeah, I I was slightly horrified by the implications on that. I was like, wait, oh shit, did I just accidentally do a bad? <laughs> uh oh, did I accidentally a war? Like, did I? I'm genuinely asking. No one's answering me. <laughs> Okay, that's a, that's an interesting glitch, Unite. Uh, what? Wigglytuff's face vanished. Oh. Guys, there's a limit to how faithful you want to be in your game. Yeah, like, um, sometimes it comes down to, okay, there's a difference between, um, parody and straight up infringement. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, from like, the sounds of Goose Goose Dog, it just sounds like Among Us, but with geese. I don't think that's enough to warrant a different experience. Yeah, um, yeah it's like uh, going back. Like there's a uh, like like uh, re like inc like uh, including outdated mechanics in remake. That's like if they were to make like a modern Castlevania game and make it so you had no like midair direction. Hmm. Oh. Oh, wait! Uh, that's what the NES version is like. What? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna check what BJ wants. Alright. Oh, crap. Ugh. Popped out my earbuds. Hang on. There we go. Uh, let's see what music we can play, because I admit I am kind of slacking on this. Um, give me a sec. Uh, stream is going to hitch a bit. I put spaces. Here we go. And we will play this. I said we will play this. There we go. You know, we already played uh, Mega Man 9's OST. Why not uh, play Mega Man X5's? I was going to do X1, but, you know, X5 was what got me into the series, so I was like, you know what, let's pay some dues right now. Ah, oh, jeez, I forgot how good the soundtrack was, though. Oh, good choice on my part.
And I think in some way, uh, X5 did influence parts of my art style. I can't tell you the exact uh, ones, but I can't tell you the exact influences, but yeah. It was one of my favorite games growing up, even though I couldn't finish it. Thanks. Thanks, Black Devil. That's the name of the boss, so please don't lambast me for this. They they named it that way. I, I think it's gross, just like the boss. Yours looking good. Thanks, Crystal. And Marker, if you're still up, uh, we appreciate you for uh, tuning in. Yeah, it's looking great. Not bad at all. Thanks. Of course, it still needs a background, but um, I think a simple color scheme could work. Like, hmm, maybe, maybe white with some lines in it? I don't know. I, <laughs> um, along with doing, uh, animals, um, backgrounds were never my strong suit, which is why I like to keep it simple. <laughs> it's like, um, there's a reason why you don't see overly detailed backgrounds in my stuff. Um, I kind of tend to do what Samurai Jack does and just stick to shapes. Which, uh in my mind, helps the characters pop out all the more, but I do try to make them uh, visually appealing uh, at the least. So, here's my highlight style for those who haven't seen it before. I'll be sure to add shading to this soon, actually. Actually, you know what? I'll do it now. We'll come back to this. The sign of a strong sneeze is the uh, uh, the sign of a strong spirit. Yeah, that's how the phrase goes. Totally. <laughs> and yeah, okay. Um... Uh. 
Yeah, that's fair. Um... Yeah, last night was a riot, you know, despite uh, the heavy stuff. Because it's like, I don't know what was going on in our brains um, after um, Sayori um, revealed what she revealed, but um, it, it was just, I didn't care. It was funny. Yeah, thanks for coming, Marker. See you later. Okay, now we can do highlights. check something here. Okay. Just wanted to check something with the Discord real fast. tablet. You can do it. There you go. Oh, I didn't realize that there's uh, phone ringing sounds in, in this song. I guess that's what listening to the OST does. Makes you notice things about the song that you didn't notice before. Like in uh, uh, Torian in Super Metroid, when uh, it has belly gurgly sounds. Ugh. That still threw me for a loop. <laughs> Duff McWhalen.
Jordan Sayori says she loves you. Aw. I love you too, Sayori. Hey, Mr. Maniac. Glad you can join us. Yeah, watching on the phone is weird. Uh, it's just one of those things, but yeah. It's like we haven't seen we haven't seen you here for a little bit of time. Um, but glad you made it. Uh, we're almost done with uh, Sayori here. This is what she's looking like so far. I decided to draw her in you know honor of her. Plus, it also gives me an excuse to uh, see how fast I can finish this, because after this, I'm planning on doing Metroid Dread. Because, um... We did get through the opening stretches, so... Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Instead of digging myself deeper, I'm just going to say that's cool. Let's see. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, ready? No, because I, I'm already dead. <laughs> um. I think this is Squid Adler stage. Or, I'm sorry, Volt Kraken now. Um, I grew up with, uh... I grew up in the generation when the Mega Man X5 Mavericks were named after Guns N' Roses members. Thank you, uh, Claire Redfield's first voice actor for doing that. Um... I think she did it mainly to, uh, appeal to her husband, who, uh, was a Gun Rose Guns N' Roses fan, but... Come on, you can't have a better name than Duff McWhalen. Um, but then obviously you get some pretty stupid names like uh, Matrax and um, the Skyver. What's a Skyver? A Spiral Pegasus is a bit of a better name, I'll agree, but uh, you can't replace Duff, Duff McWhalen. <laughs> you just can't. You shouldn't. It's illegal. Kicks the door down. Oh, no. Ah, easy glow. Got it, guys. Okay, now to slapdash a background. <laughs> I'll fully admit it. Uh, this background is totally gonna be slapdash. Um, but first, we need to give Sayori here a shadow. 
Um, yeah, we'll duplicate the layer and then we'll do we'll do a little bit of this and uh, on the saturation on the nasty. Stretch this out. Oh, oh crap! Hang on, I just realized. Uh, I did a fucky wucky. Oh wait, no, we're fine. We're fine. Never ever let me say fucky wucky ever again. <laughs> Slap it! <laughs> um. No, we're not sending her to the Shadow Realm. We're just giving her a shadow because that is how science works. Yes. I am good with descriptive words. Which is weird. Uh, I, I can write a pretty, um. I can write some pretty elegant stuff, but when I'm talking, I, I can't spit it out. Uh, here we go. Lower this, and then we'll do that, and then... Actually, I think it should be better. It might be better if we make it an off-white. Maybe around here? Yeah, there we go. That That's... That's a bit more easily digestible. Um, and then we'll do... Let's see. Hello, Bubble Crab Remix. Yeah, that's ultimately, that's ultimately what Duff McWhalen's uh, soundtrack is. It's actually a remix. Because remember, Mega Man X5 was originally going to, going to be the series of so Swan Song. Dun 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 dun. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and besides, the Shadow Realm is just right next to the Chick-fil-A, so it's not going to be a very interesting trip. <laughs> um... Okay, this is either going to look really bad or really... Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> um, and let's see if we can. Oh, hey, Dynamo, you useless little nerd. <laughs> Does anyone here remember Dynamo, by the way? Thank you, Huey Neutron. You're a hero to us all. Yeah, I think I might have been overthinking it. Modern art, question mark? I mean... Dynamo's theme is cool, but that's pretty much all he has going for him. <laughs> you can totally destroy him with zero. Then again, that goes for pretty much everyone in X5 and X6. Actually, X6 more so because zero totally wrecks that game, especially with the black armor zero. It's like, hey, if the game is going to cheat, then we should cheat back.
Okay, it's a background. Take my word. Take my word for it. <laughs> um. Okay. We'll keep it the way. We'll keep it like this. Now I just gotta sign it, and then. Cheaters never win. Says a guy. I says a guy who never cheated. <laughs> Oh, hey, the Skyver. <laughs> uh, alright. That, that should do it. So we're gonna call this done. And then I'm gonna upload this tomorrow because the Twitter algorithm is gonna screw me. Like it always does. Um. Sadayo. Doodle. Let's keep it simple. Uh, I will, however, post it in the Discord for you guys to see. So, I will do that, and then, uh, I think maybe around 6.30, the usual time, or maybe 7, uh, we'll progress with more Metroid Dread. So, let me just get this out of the way first. That's the D&D &D folder. Oops. There you are. And with that, I'll see you guys um, either around 6.30 or 7 o'clock uh, when we do Metroid Dread. So I'll keep you guys posted. So just keep an eye out. See you very soon.